Greetings, beloved hearts of love. I am Mother Akasha of the Rose Pink Ray to Life, and I greet each of you on this day, which is day 16 of the 49 days outpouring of light that takes place twice a year. And I am truly grateful. Now, precious hearts, I would remind you that you can find the information on these seven weeks outpouring of light in the Meditation Sanctuary of the Academy website. From our point of view, it is just a human tragedy that more of humankind are not aware of the great outpouring of love and light that comes into the atmosphere of earth, that pours into the mental and feeling side of human life, and into the powers of nature and the forces of the elements, twice a year for 49 days. Every human being is touched to some degree by this greater outpouring of light. And yet, you have come to understand the greater laws of life. If anything is to truly become a part of your experience, it first must become a part of your consciousness. Because this is an exceptional cycle every year where the intensification of great light rays, of greater assistance, does touch every life stream in certain ways. Yet those who are conscious of the great outpouring of light, who choose to acknowledge and accept and align themselves with this outpouring of light, that comes from the ascended and angelic host, it is these ones who are most benefited by this great cycle of time twice a year. Indeed, the number of awakened people on your earth who are becoming aware of this sacred time twice a year, indeed, those numbers are increasing. I say to you, the Ascended and Angelic Host celebrate every day in their own understanding of time the numbers of humanity who are taking steps now to awaken to their original divine nature, accepting the very God life that beats their heart and perhaps one of the greatest gifts in each of your own sovereign awakening is the acceptance of the mighty principle, the mighty presence of life, of your own divine nature that exists within, around, and above every human being, waiting to be acknowledged, and when acknowledged, and when accepted, through the power of study, and prayer, contemplation, and meditation, becomes the means that you have through acknowledgement, through acceptance and invocation to consciously expand the great principles and presence of life that for most people is laying quiescent, yet is the greater life that beats every human heart, and to expand that into an unlimited life force that can raise the human form out of density that can stop the disease and limitations of this world and then begin to release the great divine balance and perfecting activity of that greater life force that beats your your heart each day. So, beloved hearts of love, I say to you from our point of view, the greatest gift that you can give yourself thus far is your own awakening and your own acceptance of your God-given divinity that abides within you and around you as a radiance of love and as a presence of your whole divine self that yet remains in great octaves of light as your higher self or formerly known as your I Am God presence. Now, 
that you have accepted and are accepting in greater terms your own divinity. Now that you are allowing the mystery of those mighty words, I am that I am, to unfold within your consciousness with the understanding that I am is the name of God and I am is God in action. That I am is given each of us to acknowledge our own individualization. And finally, I am is the means that we direct our lives, unfold our lives, evolve, experience, and manifest by placing beyond the words I am in thought, in feeling, in imagery, in action those mighty qualifiers that allow us to direct our life, become all that we dare to dream, and manifest all that we dare to choose. You precious hearts are now scaling mighty mountains of enlightenment to naturally seek the highest states of consciousness that you can live from. And as I have said before, as one scales great heights of enlightenment, of illumination, one must be continuously aware of the fundamentals, the foundations of some mighty yet simple spiritual truths. And with the great understanding that is unfolding within each of you, and in light of what these 49 days outpouring of light offers you, what might you think is the greatest gift you can now give yourself? Having already found the Holy Grail, the sacred chalice, the great love flame in your heart, upon which is now under your direction, and it is entirely up to you as to how much you loosen that infinite, loving, intelligent energy of your heart flame, into yourselves and direct it into your life during these sacred 49 days I encourage you to call upon your ascended and angelic family to assist you in expanding and releasing the love of your heart flame into your lives your loved ones your worlds so what say you is the next greatest gift that you can give yourselves, especially one that you choose to be conscious of, one that you choose to succeed in, one that you choose to use to continue your great awakening and the attainment of all that you choose to be, become, and manifest. You have already, you have heard it already, yet I say to you, the greatest gift of every human being, once they have discovered and accepted the very presence and principles of life, of God, of divinity, that is within and around and above every human form, once this has been accepted, and one has cleared themselves of the man-made inventions of God that for the most part exists in religions and have cleared all perceptions and you have come to understand this word God in a much more kinder and a much more generous understanding. God is life. God is light. God as infinite love, infinite wisdom, infinite power, glory, and will. As you have come to understand that this is the true essence and nature of God, and then accept that the principle of this is within you, around you, and above you, then you can call into greater action 
greater measure. Again, I say to you, what is the greatest gift you can give yourself now, especially during these seven sacred weeks, these outpouring of light? That if you become determined to give yourself this gift, then all this great outpouring of light that has begun in this cycle could assist you in achieving and demonstrating that gift. It is, beloved hearts, the absolute control of your attention. This is the greatest gift a human being can give themselves once they have discovered their spiritual nature and accepted it and begun to evolve it. Once you have been on a path of healing, of facing yourselves, of understanding how you impact your reality, of understanding how thoughts become things, of giving yourself a great foundation of metaphysics and higher knowledge, the greatest gift, beloved hearts, you can give yourself is achieving the absolute power and control of your attention. And I ask you to contemplate this because it would be a great gift to help you during this outpouring of light. So ask the angels and the ascended host to help you to achieve total control of your attention and they will do so, and this will help your life immensely. When you consider that the mental and feeling side of human life is one, when you consider the tragic thought forms that are often projected into the mental side of life, and how people wrestle with those thought forms, that creates such confusion in the human mind. When you consider how the power of suggestion, which was intended to be very constructive, powerful force in your life, is too often used now destructively, even by governments, by corporations, by those who seek to control the movement of the masses. When you understand the power of suggestion that is broadcast using media, using every form that is in your world, if you really walked yourself through this, you would understand that one of the greatest gifts of life would be to value, to control, and to guard the power of your attention like nothing else. I ask you, beloved hearts, to remember the great cosmic law. What I meditate upon or what I place my attention upon long enough, that I become. Where I place my attention, there I am. Because in truth, I am not my physical body. In truth, I am an unlimited, highly intelligent being of consciousness. Regardless as to how much of that I am expressing. Yet in this life, you have stabilized your consciousness within a physical form. Because you have come to achieve something in these physical bodies. Yet you can move throughout the cosmos in your light forms. You have a multi-dimensional system of, of vehicles as beings of consciousness. And your physical body is only one of the many aspects of your multi-dimensional bodies that you can exist in at any time, fulfilling the great command that where I place my attention, there I am.
even if you place your attention away from this planet or in some great octave of light where the great ascended beings who were once just like you and then at the end of some great lifetime rather than moving through the change called death they achieved what Jesus himself said everyone must achieve and that is to overcome the last enemy, that being death, and to achieve the ascension. And as you've heard me say this before, Jesus Christ, he knew there's no death to the soul, no death to consciousness, no death to spirit. And certainly he was speaking of the seeming change called death to the physical body. And yet, even when that happens, after this experience, you yet continue to exist like you always have, with new opportunities to keep evolving. So, beloved hearts, there is nothing you cannot achieve when you put forth a clear intention first and qualify it at the highest level of achievement, that you will succeed. Find your sheer determination, then your effort towards these things becomes much easier. Therefore, I ask you if you will accept this great truth affirming one of the greatest gifts that I can give myself is the absolute control of my attention. If this is so, then I set upon this journey, and it is my intention to gain absolute control of my attention, the powers of focus and concentration, and no longer allow myself to be distracted by that which seeks to lessen and limit life. Set your attentions first, beloved hearts. When you set your intention first, then you will find it is much easier to achieve what you intend. It will be much easier for you to use your faculty of attention. We watch and watch and watch the mental side of life on earth become flooded with confusion, with destructive thought forms. We watch as people expose themselves to the broadcast of news and what is on the news as the consciousness of war, terrorism, and crime again seems to increase. And every time one turns their attention towards those things, those things in some manner anchor themselves in people's consciousness. What finds itself in someone's consciousness, their own consciousness determines that this is what you wish to happen. Your consciousness will do everything to bring into your experience what you accept and or fear. Now, if you have absolute control of your attention, indeed, you can turn the news on. You can listen to what's going on in the world. Because this is not a time to put your head in the sand and ignore what is going on out there. This is a time to be part of the solution. And so it is to teach yourself that you can stand sovereign in your own being and you can become aware of what's going on out in the world then once you hear these things, turn the news off, go on about your day. Two of the ways that you split and fragment your own attention is by over-personalizing with what is going on in the world or what is going on in other people's lives. And how do you over-personalize? It is by sympathizing. Sympathizing, precious hearts too often becomes a negative quality as far as we are concerned. 
when you sympathize and overpersonalize with what is going wrong in another person's life, too often you unconsciously create what we call a line of force, an accord. That's A-K-A, -A, an accord between that person's life and your own. That person's feeling body and your own feeling body. Now what is going wrong in their life becomes a force of struggle or irritation that starts to disturb your own emotional body. So what is the answer? The answer is to love your sovereignty. For you have lived many times trying to reclaim your sovereignty, considering the many lifetimes that you have given your power away to fear, and those who seek to control the masses realize that your sovereignty, being your own person, being your own architect of truth, are very important values that you have longed to live for. And it is not time to weaken yourself again. Now it is to live your beautiful life. And one of the things that you can do for yourself regarding the issue of compassion versus sympathy. Compassion versus over personalizing. You can have compassion with what is going on in others, yet you can stand sovereign in your own feelings. When you do not have control of the attention, you can so easily and inadvertently open your own mental body and your feeling activity to all the wrong things and destructive things and limiting things that exist out there. I have said before, some of you may have not heard it and therefore may be alarmed to hear. Yet it is probably good to hear it so that it is part of your support system and encouragement through your awareness. And it is this. 60 to 65 percent of what is acting in a human being's mental or feeling side of life, and when I say acting, I mean not in a positive way. 65 percent of that did not originate from that person. Rather, it is because people do not know how to hold control of their attention. It is because of over-personalizing and sympathy. And it is because of the five things that I've often encouraged you to refrain from. That willingness to engage in criticism, condemnation, judgment, blame, and gossip. Where people open their own mental and feeling body to wrong activities that originate from others find themselves becoming, act those things becoming active in their own mental and feeling side of life. There are reasons this happens, including the five very, very difficult human habits that I've just named, and the too often willingness of, of individuals to over-personalize and sympathize with others in a way that opens themselves to that difficulty acting in their own lives. Compassion in your own sovereignty is a much better way of conducting yourselves. I have said, the mighty Germain has said, the human being who cannot exercise absolute control over their feeling side of life is just as dangerous as some of the violent animals that exist in your world. Now, I recognize that's not a comfortable thing to hear. So I'm going to say it again, because it is so important. And that is, 
the human being who cannot exercise absolute control over their feeling side of life is often just as dangerous as some of the violent animals that exist in the world. So how do you do those things? Gain control of the feeling body and to realize that gaining control of your feeling body is not repressing your emotions. It is a willingness to analyze yourself, a willingness to weed out, weed the garden of your consciousness from time to time, and a willingness through the power of your attention to keep your attention held upon that which is the light, that which is the principle of life within you to hold your attention upon that which you wish to become, that which you wish to achieve. Hold your attention upon the importance of becoming a radiating center of peace and love as long as you are in this body, so that as you radiate those qualities to life, the pathway that you walk is a gentle path and one that offers light and love and peace to others in the presence of your own divine sovereignty. It is through the absolute control of your attention that you are most apt in holding when you have your spiritual time each day. When you then hold your attention upon the heart flame, the active presence of life within you, you eventually loosen that infinite life stream which you then can direct into your earthly lives and your worlds without limitation. It is for this reason. It is one of the greatest gifts that you can give yourself, controlling the power of your attention. And as I have just stated, once you can hold your attention for a few minutes unbroken upon your own heart flame, your heart flame would radiate so much love into your body, your life, and your world. So there's just one tiny little example, my dear hearts. What next supports you is to realize that you have lived many years in putting yourself back together, in claiming yourself back, reclaiming lost will, reclaiming power that you gave to others or to things, reclaiming fragments of yourself, and to truly understand God as life, as self-individualized, and to understand that you, And the great attributes of your beingness are like a mighty orchestra. And you are the conductor of the melody that your orchestra of life plays. All the fine attributes of your beingness are highly intelligent attributes. And in your life, You've taken the time to heal, to end all fragmentation, and you've reclaimed these lovely parts back to you now. Today, when you say to yourself, this thing I will accomplish, you, precious hearts, can do it. I wish you to have more confidence that you have reclaimed lost attributes back to yourself. And those attributes are highly intelligent. They are listening to you. Your heart is listening to you. Your feeling side of life is listening to you. The Holy Spirit is listening to you. All the qualities of divine love that exist in the feeling side of life are listening to you so that as you've gathered all the pieces of yourself back together and begin your journey of enlightenment 
then you can decree. And you can say, ah, I see the value of this. I see the value of proving to myself that I have absolute control of my attention. And I place my attention where I want my attention to be, not where the power of suggestion that comes from the outside world tries to pull up on my attention. I understand the great value of this gift, and I am determined that I will attain my victory. This will be one of my achievements. This will be the gift I give myself in these seven weeks' outpouring of light. And I welcome the great outpouring of light that is now coming in. And I ask that that light, as it weaves its light waves through me to assist me in gaining my victory in proving to myself that I have absolute control of the faculties of my attention, focus, and concentration. Because I understand what I focus upon, my own energy feeds into those things. So I certainly do not wish to use my attention being placed upon things where I do not wish my own energy going into those things. And now, as a self-aware individual, as I understand every individualization and every system of worlds must choose for themselves. No one can choose for another, beloved hearts. Once you are in, once you are in an adult life, Everyone in the adult intelligent life must choose what they will become and what they will manifest with their life. As I understand this, I see how important the control and power of my attention is. And my intention in this outpouring of light, this current one, is to use these great incoming rays of light weaving their way into my being to strengthen me, to give me the courage, to give me the insight, more comprehension than is even offered today as to the great value and power that I give myself in proving that I have absolute control of my attention and nothing and no one can pull me out of that place. This is a gift I will give myself. And I ask that the great light rays that are pouring in during these 49 days outpouring of light strengthen me so that as I continue my spiritual growth, my path of enlightenment, this is a gift that just keeps giving and giving. This is a gift that just keeps growing and strengthening within me. And then, through this increased control of the power of my attention, when I place my attention upon things and my attention is no longer fragmented, distracted, then my energy will feed more directly into what I wish to become, what I wish to experience, what I wish to manifest, and I will prove to myself that gaining control of my faculty of attention is one of the greatest gifts I give myself during these seven sacred weeks. And so I say to you, beloved hearts, what say you? And then you can turn to your presence. You can turn to the Ascended Masters. Remember, dear hearts, I have shared before that when an Ascended Master speaks a truth, if you choose to say, 
I like that. I'm going to try that. Then the Ascended Master, who spoke the truth, has a responsibility to assist you in any great truth they teach. So that you can, if you choose to align and say, I like that, I shall make that my victory. Then the Ascended Master has a responsibility to assist you to that victory. Now, because my dispensation to the earth, I, Mother Akasha, is my rose pink ray from the great central sun, and one of the great qualities of the rose pink ray is divine will, then if you will send me a little message in your prayer time and say to me, Mother Akasha, one of the gifts that you have offered is the awareness of how important is the control of my attention. When I can demonstrate this, when I can exercise this control, there will be many new things that I will be able to achieve. And therefore, because you have expanded upon this understanding to me today, I ask you, to offer me the divine will of your rose pink ray to assist me in accomplishing the absolute control of my attention, this great activity to life. I will not let you down, dear hearts. This is a wonderful new time, despite the chaos in the outer world, you are all here for many mighty reasons, not only your own evolution. You are all here to be the opening light in this incoming golden age. I would remind you, as in previous golden ages, the first 100 years are the most difficult because a golden age comes to uplift humanity. It comes to resurrect humanity, to raise humanity out of its own self-imposed destruction and disintegration, and to raise humanity up and out of the absence of light, that being the darkness. And when this happens, there are those precious hearts, they hate the light, and they will do everything to stop it, and the first 100 years of any new civilization, any new golden age, is always the most difficult. So we will stay the course. We will know. Victory is ours. Beloved hearts of love, I will also take this message to say that to those of you who only know me through the Academy YouTube channel, I would encourage you to at least consider to go online to the Academy website and to subscribe to my Tree of Life classes that are generally four times a month. I am confident that within a couple of months, you will discover the great value in studying the Tree of Life teachings, realizing the ancient Tree of Life teachings were those original teachings in the ancient Himalayan Mystery School, teachings that the beloved Christ studied when he was on your earth as Yeshu ben Joseph. I enfold you in the love of the Mother's Presence, a love that always seeks to fulfill. Beloved precious hearts of love's eternal presence, namaste, namaste, namaste.